I want to take a second to read a quick joke. Uh, like, you know, most Baptist pastors do. They read a, read a joke, even though I'm not a pastor. But they read a joke, and uh, then they give a relevant message. This message is going to be extremely short, much shorter than a joke. But the joke made me think of the message. So, you may have already heard this, but there's this uh, airline's called Qantas and they do this you know uh, where the pilots you know talk about problems that they had during flights and then the mechanics they you know they address the problems and then they put a response so these are some of the actual you know comments that the pilots made and then the actual responses that the mechanics made in response to the pilots claims and then uh I think the last one is made up, but I don't know that. You know, it just seems a little bit more ridiculous than the rest of them. But either way, so it's first it's going to be what the pilot says. And then secondly, it's going to be the solution that the mechanic offers. So this pilot, the first pilot said, uh, left inside main tire almost needs replacement. And so the solution was almost replaced left inside main tire. Uh, this one, the pilot said, test flight okay, except auto land very rough. All right, and the solution was, auto land is not installed on this aircraft. <laughs> and then uh, this pilot said, something loose in the cockpit. And uh, the solution was, something tightened in the cockpit. Uh, this pilot said, uh, dead bugs on the windshield. The solution was, live bugs on back order. This pilot said, autopilot in altitude hold mode produces a 200 feet per minute descent. So autopilot in altitude hold mode produces a 200 feet per minute descent. Uh, the person said, cannot reproduce problem on ground. Uh, this pilot said, evidence of leak on right main landing gear. And the solution was evidence removed. Uh, this pilot said DME volume unbelievably loud and the solution was DME volume set to a more believable level. Uh, this pilot said friction locks cause throttle levers to stick and the solution was that's what friction locks are made for. Uh, this pilot said IFF inoperative in off mode and then the solution was IFF always in operative in off mode. This pilot said suspected crack in the windshield. The solution was suspected. You're right. <laughs> uh, this pilot said number three engine missing. Now this is my favorite one. The solution was engine found on right wing after very brief search. Okay. Uh, this one the pilot said aircraft handles funny. The solution was aircraft warned to straighten up, fly right, and be serious. This one says target radar hums. And the solution was programmed target radar with lyrics. This pilot said mouse in the cockpit. The solution was cat installed. And this is the one that I think is probably not true, but either way. It says noise coming from under instrument panel. Sounds like a midget pounding on something with a hammer. And so the solution was, took hammer away from the midget. So I said all that to say this. With Bible doctrine, it's very easy, often very easy to refute any false doctrine. You really don't need a lot of biblical knowledge. In fact, you know, you really don't even need to have read the Bible. Now, definitely helps. But oftentimes, if you have any kind of working knowledge of the Bible, all you have to do is go to whatever verses that they're using to support their doctrine and just read that verse in context. And that will answer just about any, uh, or refute just about any false doctrine. Uh, usually the very verses that they use to support their doctrine are the very verses you can use to destroy their doctrine. 
and it works the same in the world. Just about any agenda people push out there, all you have to do is just go to the agenda that they're pushing, look at the studies that they're citing or whatever, and nine times out of 10, those studies do not say what they're purporting or saying that they're saying. So, um, it's the same when people use false doctrine. It's just like in this joke where the, the engine was missing. The third engine was missing from the right wing and the pilot found it after a very brief search. You just, you know, you go right to where the engine should be and bam, there it is. And that's how it is when you're refuting these false doctrines. And not every false doctrine is bad, but every false doctrine is false, okay? And the thing about a false doctrine being false is you're focusing your time and energy and your belief and your and your study in something that is not true. And then you go off and you teach people things that are not true. Uh, there's a guy that was, I was watching a friend of mine sent me a video and uh, he was on a Kent Hovine post and he was preaching that, that you know, bad Christians uh, people that aren't good Christians, they're still saved. They're still saved by grace, but they don't get to reign in the millennial reign. He was preaching that uh, that they're in outer darkness. He actually believes they're in hell for a thousand years during the millennial reign. And so he used these verses like, you know, being cast into outer darkness for his proof. So all I had to do was go to the verses that mention outer darkness in Matthew, and you can see that it's not talking about bad Christians, it's talking about unbelieving Jews. It was the unbelieving Jews that were cast off. It was the unbelieving Jews that were unprofitable servants. It was the unbelieving Jews that were wicked and faithful servants that were cast into outer darkness. It's not, you know, bad Christians. Um, and then there's also just the simple fact that, that Jesus suffered for three days and three nights in hell, and that's the only time he's ever going to hell. And so as a saved Christian, you have Christ in you, you have the Holy Ghost in you, and, and if you think Jesus Christ is going to go to hell and suffer for a thousand years because you're you were weak and your flesh dominated your spirit, you're very wrong, okay? Jesus Christ is not going to go to hell for a thousand years and suffer again just because you sowed to the flesh instead of to the spirit. The old man is dead. All things are become new. So even though his doctrine was not particularly damaging, he wasn't preaching a false gospel or anything like that, but it's just a false doctrine. And all you just had to do was, I just looked at the verses that he was showing, and every time I would read the verse, I'd be like, man, that does not say what he's saying that it says. He's just distorting it. He's just taking the verses out of context. Or he's seeing little words, and then he's, you know, making some play on words to try to manipulate you. And one of the big things that he talked about was that, you know, uh, you know, hundreds of years ago that this was a very common belief. It was extremely popular, blah, 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 blah. Well, here's the thing. If it was an extremely popular true belief hundreds of years ago, it would still be popular um, among true believers today. You know, we don't tend to not pass down to the Christians that are with us that we're going out and giving the gospel to and stuff, uh, true doctrines. We tend to not pass down doctrines that are untrue. So if the doctrine had a period in history where it was just dead, where nobody believed it, it's something to be very suspect of. And so, you know, I've randomly heard a couple people talk like this, but never actually get out there and say what they actually believe. But just about any place, any any teaching that people have, you just go right to the Bible verses for it, such as dispensationalism. You just go right to the 
the verses where it talks about dispensationalism or dispensation, etc. in the Bible. There's only four of them. And they talk about the exact opposite of what dispensationalism teaches. Dispensationalism teaches that you're dividing between ages and genealogies and blah, 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 blah. But when you go through the, the verses on dispensation, they're talking about bringing into one. It's the opposite of dividing. You're, you're taking those that are divided and you're making them one. Okay, and it's just that easy to go through and say, you know, and it says things like not worrying about genealogies and things like this. So it's just the, the very verses that you go to or that they use, you know, often is what disproves what they believe. And it's the same with this, like this joke, the engine that was missing that was found after a very brief search. Uh, their doctrine is missing truth and that can be found after a very brief search you just have to go right to where uh, the doctrine is just like the man went right to where the engine should be and there he found it either way i hope that that helps you guys when you're studying the bible all you got to do is just go right to where uh what they're saying is you know take the little phrases that they're saying they, they say things like cast into outer darkness well you just type in outer darkness and KJV and you'll find like KJV online. It'll give you every mention of outer darkness. And then you just go through and you read them. And every mention of outer darkness in, in the KJV that I saw was about the, the nation of the Jews that were cast off and cast into outer darkness because they were wicked and unprofitable servants. In other words, what the Bible teaches about people that are flesh uh, they're not the children of God. It's people that are of the Spirit, that believe like righteous Abraham, that are of the seed, which is Jesus Christ, the seed of Abraham. So all you have to do is just look at it. You know, that's the first thing you got to do, as they say. Either way, God bless. I hope this message helps somebody, and uh, y'all have a good one.